Hello everyone, my name is Marisha and today's topic is are you honest? Because if you're not, you're a liar. Point blank period. That's the opposite of honesty. Lying. Dishonesty. Okay? So you have to be an honest person unto God, unto to others, and to yourself. And the reason why I bring that up because you just end up living a deceived, a lying a falsified life it's not real it'd be fake it'd be full of filler filler um fillers like a lot of like a lot of fluff a lot of like not it's not real it's not real because every time truth comes about or something is put before you you'll have nothing that's true at all that'll come out of you because your whole entire time the whole entire time you're faking it you're faking to make it. Fake it till you make it. That's a lie. Because how can you fake it to make it? it? Doesn't make sense. Oh, you know, just try to do it. Like your heart and mind are in the budget. So at least try to do it and just go with it. No, it, it does not work that way because you're faking it the whole entire time. So as time go by, your mind wasn't really there. You're just doing it just to do it. It's nothing. So that is one of the worst um practices, phrases ever to ever do to me one of the most it's just the worst thing ever do. Fake it till you make it. No, it's, it's impossible. Well nothing is impossible with God. Yeah, but the Lord requires a willing heart, a willing mind. So faking it till you make it, that's not willing. You're just you're faking it. It's not real. It's not sincere. So the Lord rather us to be honest. Let him know the deepest truth of what's really going on. I don't know what's really going on. Well, seek his face. Seek his righteousness. Draw near to God. He'll draw near to you. You double-mindedness. You sinners. He will purify your heart and cleanse your hands. The Lord will do so. As you seek him, as you seek righteousness, as you seek him to be holy, to do what is good, to do what is right before him. Yeah, you want to live a good, righteous, a holy lifestyle that's in agreement. That's according to the Holy Bible. It's according to what God said, to what Jesus preached, and to what the Word was saying from the beginning, to obey the Lord, to fear the Lord. Because I've been reading, or I just finished reading the book of Numbers. And throughout this book, you know, Moses is leading the children of Israel. And the children of Israel, you know, they're stick neck people. The Lord keeps saying that. And he brings it up again in the New Testament. How the children of Israel were stick necked people. These are stubborn people. He, did. he had a hard time with them. And we could see why. Like what, what they had to go through because of the disobedience of them not wanting to serve God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. Even though God was amongst them. That was one of the laws that he mentioned last was about murder. It was when he said he also talked about the inheritance of women later. But before that, talked about like the blood, like how death caused people to be defiled, that place to be defiled. And the Lord says he doesn't want it because the God of Israel does. God dwells with Israel. God is with God is amongst you. So it means you have to be sincere. Like God is holy. God is righteous. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. You might not think, oh, he's in heaven. Like, yes, heaven is his throne. The earth is his footstool, yes. But by his spirit, he is everywhere. So with that being said, you will be judged according to your works, what you do your actions, your words, and the words that doesn't come out your mouth, every outer word that proceeds out of you, the Lord will judge you for it. So you have to be careful with the things that goes or flows through the heart because God is a judge and he will search out matters. You will be tried through the fire. You will go through certain you will go through certain circumstances, situations and a reaction is going to come out of you. Something is going to be brought up and it's going to expose and reveal what's really going on in your heart. 
Because you can say you're a Christian. You can say you're devout. You can say you're virtuous. You can say you're a man of valor. You can say you're an intercessor. You can say you're a prophet. You can say you're a prophetess. You can say you're a pastor. You can say you're the, the first lady. You can say above and beyond. If your heart is far from God, that is an issue. The Lord talks about that. There are people who honor him with their lips, meaning their mouth, what they say, but their actions, their hearts are far from him. And those people he will reject. Those people he will not listen to, hearken to. Because the word of God says, if you have iniquity in your heart, God will not hear you. God will not hear you if you have evil things going on in your heart. Well, nobody's perfect. No, you know, you can't be perfect to the blood of Jesus. And yes, you will be perfected. So you're going to have some evil things. But if you're addressing these things before the Lord, especially stuff you're new, that you know you deal with or struggle with or you have a strong sense of justification, like, no, this is it, this is who I am. But you know it's bad. But like, Lord, it's evil. Like, for instance, myself, who was one of the last, like, Oh, my impatience. I realized, like, oh, Lord, I'm very impatient when it comes to some matters. Like, I'd rather deal with the issue right now. Like, I don't care right now. I'm like, if something happens, I say something, like, oh, it's going to be dealt right now. Oh, I want this right now. Like, the impatience. And I had to bring that before the Lord because I realized, like, Lord, if I keep acting this way, I'm going to mess things up. I'm going to just be bitter and upset and just confused all the time because of my lack of patience. And I had to just get it onto the Lord. Lord, help me, Lord. I, because in this area, Lord, I feel comfortable. I feel like I'm right concerning these matters. But, you know, I repent, like, Lord, I don't like this. This is not it. Like, I had to repent of it. Well, it was different circumstances where I lacked patience. And I had to repent of it. It was to the point it was so burdensome, like, how much emotions on my side, like, how, like, it agreed, like, no, I'm this way because, 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 like, I had a lot of because it's like, see, these, all these chances, these opportunities, this, 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 this. Like, I had so much just to justify, just to prove why I should hold on to this anger. Or I should hold on to this bitterness. Why should I? Like, I felt right. Like, no, I'm right about these matters. Like, this, this circumstance happened this way. I don't want to forgive the person because of this. I don't want to do it because this, this. I mean, it was like, the list was ridiculous. Like, really? And I think about it, like, are you Marisha? You, you you really hold on to this because of this. And majority of it wasn't even real. It was just, just by assumption. So I was like, it was so burdensome. It was so heavy. Like, my heart started to hurt. And I was like, Lord, you don't have my whole heart. Lord, I'm like, help me, Lord, because I am justifying this matter. And I think it's right that I feel this way. But... At the same time, Lord, this isn't right. I do not want to lose my peace. I don't want to go forward in this. I don't want to um, harbor this. I don't know, Lord. I cannot do it. It was hard. It was hard. But, you know, by faith, like, oh, no. Lord, this is evil in your sight. Lord, forgive me. Sanctify me. Purify me, Lord. And I forgive. Like, I'm almost hard to forgive. Because where God says... If you don't forgive others, God will not forgive you. And we get the parable of the rich ruler or king. Or God, I forgot. A rich person, very rich. Someone who's working under him, owe him a lot of money. And the person didn't have the money to um, pay him back. So with the rich governor, the ruler, the person who had a lot, you know, Noel, I took, um, I removed his debt. You don't, you don't owe me no more. It's fine. You can go on. So you go on with life. The person, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So then the person goes back to his way of living. And somebody else owed him. And this person owed less than what he had with the other person. And he was upset. He was wroth. 
like, oh, you owe me. I'm going to kill this, do this, take this if you don't owe me back. And this news was sent to Rula like, hey, what are you doing? And this person, you, you, you owed way more than that person owed you. And you don't listen for me forgiving you and get, get rid of your debt and say, I'm going to treat the madness that you're going to do. And he's sent to prison. All the darkness, he was like, no. You, you, like, if I can forgive, you can forgive too. But however, this God did not forgive. This God want revenge. This God want you owe me. Felt justified in what happened. Got sent away. And that's many people's lives. They're being sent away from the presence of God. And they're, di- and they're dying. They're becoming dead. They fall asleep, get up the ghost, and find themselves in hell. Due to unforgiveness. Not just the people all just talk to God regarding God. Like, God can't trust God. People curse God, blaspheme God, and then die. Like, are you serious? Did this just happen? Is this real? Yes, it's real. It's life. People do it. People rebel against God. And and people feel justified. Like, well, this is, I'm going to justify this. And I feel this way about the matter. And I'm going to go with it till I die. And people die that way. Just cursed far from God for eternity. And no coming back. Well, I saw YouTube. This young man, this young woman, this old man, this old woman. They had a testimony how they died and went to hell and they got back alive and they can now they're preaching the gospel. Okay, what made the person go to hell? What made the person like do you know these people you listen to? You have to be careful and be like like on honest yourself. Well, I can discern, I can I'm telling you, the last video, quote unquote Christian video I watched had me borderline Muslim. This person had me borderline must they had some truth in what they were saying or prophesying. And but some other stuff had me borderline what Muslim. Why do I say this? This is I'm in college and I'm saved too. I'm wanting to be more serious. Graduated high school. I'm in college now. Have the same friends. I want to be a good model to those who I'm around. Because I'm saving now at high school. We're grown. We're becoming good adults. I want to be a good example. I want to be a light. And I'm, and I'm in school. And someone's like, hey, Marcia, watch this video. Watch this video. I was like, hey, go to this person. Will you, you will send me some Really nice videos or encourage videos stuff like that. So I'm like, hey, why not? Watch this video. Someone from Africa prophesying to people in America. And I watched this and I took it to the T. I changed my apparel, everything. And I went to school. My you know, clothes covered all my body. No sleeves. It was winter time too, so and then my head wrapped up and my hair being wrapped up more than usual. And people went from high school, hey, are you Muslim now? <laughs> and I was like, No. And she's like, Oh. I'm like, why? The way you dress. And I think to myself, like, what motivated me? I'm like, what's going on in my clothing? Even though another friend who wasn't saved at the time like, I was just talking to her about the Lord like Marisha what are you doing now like no I'm trying to be holy you know this is this video I'm telling you people if you don't know those who labor amongst you if you don't know these people yes people got testified they had a dream they saw this celebrity here and the celebrity told them this in the dream and this ha-. if you don't know the person you should you shouldn't even Chance it. I wish I don't know you. Hey, I'm telling you the truth. I'm, I'm being honest with you. Like what, the, the type of foolishness that is out there online. It will mess you up, especially now, days today. The days are dark, and days like the days are getting more evil. The information that people are exposing to themselves are way more evil than before. 
And the Lord tells us to watch out for these prophets because they're not all honest. They're not going to tell you the truth. They're going to say things that you want to hear. Girl power, encourage yourself, you know. Be very, be strong. God going to bless you. God got it in you. God knows your heart. You don't need to go to church. You the church. So many people are causing discord. I don't know, I'm just recently I used to I look at the, I go on the Apple store on the iPhone and I like to see like which apps are um the top chart top charted apps. And this one called Discord. And I'm just like, why would a person want an app called Discord? And you know the Lord loves unity. And God hates a person who causes discord. But yet this app is called Discord. And people like it because it's in the top charts. I'm like, wow, the world is coming this far into darkness, going backwards. Like evil Satan is exposing himself. Antichrist is in everything now. And But people are so blind. So people are so drunk. People are so knowledgeable, quote, quote unquote, knowledgeable. People are very intellectual. People are so spiritual. Positivity, negativity, good vibe, bad vibes, you know. People are witches now. They're witches in the church. They've always been witches in the church, but now people are witches. Literally witches. Warlocks. People who hate God and, and they find methods and ways in life to control life or get answers. But yet they want to pray and praise and lift their hands onto God and quote scripture. But their lifestyle is rebellious. There's no life in them. There's no life in their words. There's no, there's no life in what they do. They're just vain. They're entitled. They're lost. They're confused. But yet, these are the people who are most of the time heard and watched. And yet, because God said he would give you up to your desire to listen to your heart. If you don't want to change. Like, hey, this is, this is what you want. I'm going to give you the lady give you the man in the tight clothes, tight shirt, fake lashes, fake hair, high heels, mini skirt, tore up, halter top, piercing, tattoo, fresh tattoo, rock star, hip hop, rapper, Christian rapper, youth minister who smoke weed with the youth. Yeah. Who does Zimba who do Zumba with the youth, play video games and pajama night, but no secure undergarments that don't care. It's okay. Judge free zone. Tell me, it's practically hippies in the house of God. Usually hippies should come to come to the house of God to change unto repentance to be transformed by God, but no people are becoming dark. And they don't care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And that's the issue. It's a lack of honesty. It's a lack of truth. A lack of fear of God in the hearts of men. Days. Nowadays. The lack of fear of God. The Lord is going to bring it back. The Lord is going to store up his people. The Lord is going to cause some ruckus. God's going to shake the earth, shake the people, shake the nation so they know there is a God. And you have to be prepared every day. You have to be prepared. Reading the book of Acts today, too. And it talked about how Cornelius was a centurion, a devout man who feared God and prayed always. And his household, these people served the Lord, too, and he's known among the Jews. The reputation. Man, it's easy for him to hear the voice of God when the Lord came to speak to him. What was the name? The Lord came to speak to him. Even Ananias. Like, here I am, Lord. The Lord is calling. Like, that's how available these people are. Like, Lord, here I am. But no, people are not available now. People don't um, snooze, snooze in the Lord. Do not disturb. Like, Lord, I'm disturbing you. I'm trying to get my money. I'm trying to I'm trying to be the GOAT. I want to be the top. I want to have 
the greatest net worth. I have stocks to put my money in. I have producers, I have things, I have followers, I have subscribers, I have fans. Yeah, people are too busy, too busy. I'm trying to get a man, I'm trying to get a woman. I, I'm, I'm gonna tie the knot, I'm, I'm trying to settle down. People don't want the Lord anymore. People are just busy. People are busy making themselves a name. They're rioting, rioting, causing ruckus, causing evilness to come. And they don't know it's just the plan of the Lord using the enemy to cause these things, to cause a shift in your environment to your world where you have no choice but to call on the name of the Lord. So that's why you have to be honest. Like, Lord, this is my matter. This is it. And before that, you come to my acknowledge him because you know he's holy, he's sovereign. Worship his name, bless his name. And pray according to his will and, and ask for repentance. No, ask for forgiveness and repent of matters and pray for others. And, and pray that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, shout out to the Lord. You better cry out. My people are not crying. People are shutting doors of the hearts of the house of God. People of God, people are not available. People are too busy. Too busy doing nothing. They're stealing from God. Stealing resources and things from the Lord. And they get upset when things happen, bad things happen to them. So again, you have to be sincere. Not only those who are honest before the Lord and they want a good reputation before God. They want to be acknowledged by God. They want to be heard and seen by God, not by man. And they don't fear man's face. They only fear God. They fear the one who can restore both body and soul in hell. The one who's actually in control. The one who instructs and gives commands. That's who we listen to. The sheep do not listen to the voice of a stranger. There's a good shepherd who loves us, died for us, and rose again on the third day. Who is alive and leading and interceding, filling the gap on our behalf to God, being the bridge, being the one who filled the breach. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ, God Himself became a man, Jesus Christ, and then died. God died Himself. For you and I. And that's the truth. That is the truth. That is life. That Jesus is the life. He's the truth and he's the way. And you can only get to the Father through him and by him. So. Repent. Because the kingdom of God is at hand. And Lord is looking for those who are sincere. Those who are real. Those who are real. Who are sincere. Who are focused. Who are willing to be dedicated, willing to have a willing heart. The Lord is looking and searching for those who are available. So be available for the Lord when he calls you and wants you to work and do. Don't be caught off guard and not know what to do and cause yourself to fall into sin. Like, no, be in position. And then I just, here I am, Lord. Cornelius, here I am, Lord. Be available. And when matters came to Moses, he went to the Lord. When children of Israel rebelled, disobeyed, Aaron and Moses bowed down. They knew what to do. They knew they had the right response. And that's what we're learning. To have the right response with honesty. To be a king, to be a, a priest before the Lord. You don't want to be like Aaron's son to be standing up a strange fire. A life of disobedience, a life of rebellion. A life with own ideas. That's pretty much the sons of Aaron did. They did their own thing. Responded the wrong way. So as if, if your life is responding the wrong way and it's opposite of God's will, you're standing up a strange fire. It's not a strange fire. You're speaking in tongues. You have the gift of the Holy Spirit. You're prophesying. That's not a strange fire. The person who made that doctrine up, who believe it ceased, they're a strange fire. That those are people who should not be in the congregation in the house of God. But no, they're in the house of God. And they preach about it, and other people are being affected by it. They're being a malefactor. 
being a virus. Like, guess what? Teach them how to doctrine. Like, do not give them, not even 30 minutes, not even an hour. Don't let them talk. Don't let them come to your house. But know you're buying the books, buying the audio tapes, and listening to these people who are blaspheming the Lord. Some dead, some alive. And it's a sad thing. But if you're honest, and you're sincere with God, oh God, he will not let your foot slip. And as your foot slide, he will help you. He will be your refuge in time of need, in time of not only in, in the peace, in the storm, he will be there. So that's why today is the day of salvation. So repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. And again, God's looking for those who are honest, who are sincere, who fear him, who reverence him, who acknowledges him and want to be like him.